Lesson six is about adding fractions and mixed numbers. So when we get to adding and subtracting with fractions, that's a little bit different than multiplying and dividing. Um, so going through the steps, the first thing that I recommend doing is to rewrite the problem vertically so that our fractions line up and our whole numbers line up. Um, it's a good way, especially when we get to subtraction, um, that helps keep things uh, in order so that you don't make a mistake. Um, the important part with adding and subtracting is that we have to find common denominators, or that least common multiple. Once we find those, we're going to convert our denominators by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. Once we've converted, add the fractions, where you're just adding the numerators, not the denominators. Add the whole numbers, and then simplify if necessary. So first example, 15 and 3 fourths plus 8 and 1 sixth. Okay. So first step is to find that least common multiple, that least common denominator. 4 and 6. We realize that the smallest number that they both multiply into is 12. Okay, So I've got my problem that I'm rewriting vertically to start off with. I've got 15 and 3 fourths plus 8 and 1 sixth. But now I need to rewrite the problem with the same common denominator. So my whole numbers stay the same, but my denominators are going to become 12. So the 8 stays the same, but we're going to change the denominator to 12. So what I have to do is I have to multiply it by something to get to 12. And I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. 4 times what equals 12? Well, 4 times 3 equals 12. If I multiply the bottom by 3, I have to multiply the top by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Down here, I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by something to get to 12. Well, 6 times what is 12? 6 times 2. If I multiply the denominator by 2, I have to multiply the numerator by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So what a lot of people like to do instead is they like to make these improper. You can get to the right answer doing that. A lot of times you're making it more difficult on yourself than you need to. Okay, You're multiplying, especially when you've got large whole numbers, by big values that makes it more complicated. So now let's go ahead and add. 9 plus 2 is 11 over 12. 15 plus 8 is 23. Okay, I need to double check to make sure that if I need to simplify that, I don't. So that is my final answer. Example number two. We've got five and five eighths plus eleven and two sevenths. So again, I'm going to rewrite my problem vertically. I've got five and five eighths plus eleven and two sevenths. And then I'm looking for that least common denominator or that least common multiple. Well, the first number, the lowest number that they both multiply into is. 56. So I'm going to rewrite those numbers with those common denominators. So I keep the whole numbers the same, but the denominator is going to become 56. So 11 stays the same, but the denominator becomes 56. So again, I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same value to get to that denominator 56. Here we've got 8 times what is 56? Well, 8 times 7, if I multiply the denominator by 7, I have to multiply the numerator by 7. 5 times 7 is 35. Here I have to multiply 7 times something to get to 56. Well, 7 times 8, if I multiply the denominator by 8, I have to multiply the numerator by 8. 2 times 8 is 16. Now I can go ahead and add. 35 plus 16, well, 5 plus 6 is 11. Carry the 1, 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 51 over 56. And then I add 5 plus 11, which is 16. I always should double check to make sure that I can simplify. I can't. So that's my final answer.